Desecration of the Graves of RHM Martyrs Written by Abu Bakr Abdulwal and read by Yafet Zeru My martyred son, may you now be free from pain. My martyred son, may you now be free from pain. My martyred daughter, may your grave be tranquil. My martyred daughter, may your grave be tranquil. May the waters of paradise spring from your graves. May your graves be the heralds of the bright dawn. I, your mother, was spared by the Lord. To see your monument, to kiss your monument, to witness your honour, to hear your praise. I am your mother that the Almighty has spared. May he welcome you in his heavens. May he grant you a place in his boundless paradise. This dirge was first recited by an elderly lady by the name of Amuna, better known as Mama Badima, on 19th June 1996 on the occasion of the unveiling of the Monument Commission in honour of Eritrea Martyrs and the consecration of a Martyrs Cemetery in the rural town of Shambuko. Mama Badima had worked with most of the martyrs whose remains were being put to rest at the new cemetery during the years of the liberation struggle and were well known to her. The decision to erect a monument for the Eritrea martyrs that had fallen during the 30-year-long liberation struggle and dedicate a cemetery for them at Shamboko was first proposed in 1993 during the period of the Eritrean referendum by the then administrator of Shamboko, Tegadalai Kidani Wudasalas. The people of Shamboko and its vicinity were in complete agreement with the idea and embraced it wholeheartedly, contributing what they could towards the effort to create a monument befitting the legacy of the martyrs of Eritrea in the area. Through the efforts of the locals and the members of the Eritrean Defence Force, the project was completed on 19th June 1996. The following day, 20th June 1996, on Eritrea Martyrs Remembrance Day, the monument and cemetery were inaugurated in a candlelit vigil led by both Christian and Muslim religious leaders. In a speech he made on 20th June 1996, the administrator of Shamboko said, in the erection of this historic monument and consecration of this cemetery, the people and the Eritrean army have shown great willingness and exceptional persistence to complete this project. This should be seen as a clear and unequivocal manifestation of the grave responsibility that they feel towards fulfilling the aspirations of the fallen martyrs. This monument has a huge and profound meaning for us. It is in recognition of this that we shall create a garden here reflect our innermost sentiments. In the afternoon of 20th June 1996, eight large boxes containing the remains of 137 martyrs were laid to rest in the new cemetery with full military honours. The remains had been collected from where they had fallen with the greatest of care by former Eritrean People's Liberation Front EPLF fighters and the locals. The remains were lovingly and with the utmost respect carefully laid to rest in honour at the rightful place. Tokombio, which lies to the west of Shamboko, is a town known for its busy and well-established markets in the Gashbaka region. Its residents come from the Belen, Hausa, Hedrab, Kunama, Tigre, Tigrinya and Saho ethnic groups, who have lived peacefully and in harmony. As Tokombia has a long border with Ethiopia, it has always been a victim of aggression, with war and threats of war on the horizon, never too far away. The Martyr's Monument at Tokombe was placed at the entrance of the rural town in 1995. The entire project had been a joint effort between the Eritrean Defence Forces and the locals. In his speech at the unveiling of the monument, Tegadalai Muhammad Noor Kalabai, the administrator of Tokombe said, One of the first things that the people of Tokombe wanted to do after independence was to erect a monument in honour of the memory of the fallen martyrs and dedicate a cemetery to them. To this end, a committee had been established to oversee the work and coordinate the fundraising campaign. With financial and other contributions from the locals, technical and material help from the Gash Park Administration Office, the work was completed in just under nine months. The remains of 110 martyrs that had fallen before the War of Aggression of the Tigray People Liberation Front TPLF against Eritrea were laid to rest at the cemetery, 
These were Eritrean fighters that had fallen during the liberation struggle. These two martyr cemeteries later came to hold not only those heroes that had fallen during the liberation war, but also those brave Eritreans that had fallen fighting the war of aggression by TPLF-led Ethiopian forces in 1998. It is to be noted that the martyr cemetery of Shamboko was where the very first victims of the TPLF aggression were laid to rest. They were a group of eight officers of the Eritrean Defense Forces who, on 6th of May 1998, were deliberately and maliciously murdered by TPLF forces as they were trying to discuss the issue of Eritreans being harassed by TPLF forces whilst they were on their own land. It was soon after the monuments of Shambuko and Tokombia had been constructed and inaugurated that TPLF-led Ethiopian forces launched the first of the three offensives against Eritrea in May of 1998. Seven months after the first offensive, in February 1999, the TPLF launched its second offensive. Some of those who had fallen to safeguard the sovereignty of Eritrea were laid to rest in these cemeteries. The TPLF's war of aggression showed no sign of abetting. Rather, it was escalated with even more intent and at a much larger scale. On 12 May 2000, the TPLF launched its third offensive on all fronts, Bure, Altena Merab, Kasar Ikan, and along the wide Merab Setit front. It was during this offensive that TPLF forces managed to reach Shamboko and Tokombia by the end of May. It's a well known fact that in the recent past, Eritrea and Eritreans have witnessed unspeakable atrocities being committed by the last two Ethiopian governments on Eritreans in Eritrea. Entire villages had been burned to the ground, rape, looting, and pillaging had been widespread. Civilians had been locked in their homes and burnt alive. Civilians had been run over by Ethiopian tanks, their bodies cut to pieces by the metal tracks. But none of this served to prepare Eritreans for the new depths in depravity that the TPLF was willing to sink to. For when the TPLF entered the rural towns of Shambok and Tokombe, the very first thing it did was to desecrate the new monuments and cemeteries that had been created for the Eritrean martyrs. In an act of wanton, despicable vandalism, TPLF forces dug up the graves of the martyrs and scattered the remains of Eritrea's martyrs out in the open. This was a malicious and crude act that no previous Ethiopian government, despite their history of committing unspeakable atrocities on civilians, had ever done. It was only after the TPLF desecrated and defiled the graves of Eritrea's martyrs that it went on its looting and pillaging spree of the towns destroying everything it could not take. Member Gideon Yamana, who had participated in the initial campaign to create a memorial for the Eritrean martyrs, had this to say. If we were to examine the history of mankind, we would see that men fight against men. Never have I come across an occasion where the living had picked a fight against the dead. Even Cain regretted killing his brother and scoured the earth to find a place to bury his body because he had respect for the dead. He buried the dead body of his brother, showing that he had respect for the dead. This act of callous mischief committed by the TPLF forces on the precious remains of our martyrs, even after 18 years, causes me great anguish and consternation whenever I think about it. After this heinous act of vandalism, those who were there recall that when they approached the cemetery, they could see white objects lying on the ground, glimmering in the glaring sunshine. Some of the objects were round, while others were long and rod-like. The objects were scattered all over the ground, under the scorching sun. As they got closer, to their utter horror, the white objects dotted all over turned out to be human remains. The skulls and limbs of Eritrean martyrs. The marble monument that had stood tall and proud in honor of the fallen heroes had been blown up. The boxes that had once contained the precious remains of Eritrea's martyrs, violently emptied of their contents, lay crushed and discarded to one side. After Eritrean forces regained control of the towns, a reconnaissance unit from the Eritrean army was tasked with gathering the scattered remains. The unit fulfilled this task with great care and exemplary dedication carefully gathering all the remains. The sight of the bones of Eritrea's heroes lying out in the open, scattered by the hands of the vindictive and petty enemies of Eritrea, 
was extremely painful. After the remains were gathered, the leader of the unit called for a minute's silence to remember the fallen. They stood around the remains that they had gathered and solemnly remembered the martyrs, after which the remains were reburied with full honours in a mass grave. A member of the Eritrean Defence Forces, Tagus Hagos Okbu, who was standing next to us taking pictures, had this to say about his experiences. It is true that you do not expect your enemy to look after your home, to leave it clean and smelling of the scent of incense. By its very nature, your enemy is your enemy and will only seek to destroy what is yours. History itself will bear witness to this. But to dig up a grave and then scatter the remains is an act that is difficult to comprehend and hard to believe that it ever happened. Without the hard evidence we have, no one would have believed us. When we speak of such a gruesome act having been committed, we would have been accused of exaggeration, of trying to defame our opponent. Mrs. Sekka Habtu is a resident of the rural town of Shambuko and was one of the first people to have enthusiastically rushed to help erect a memorial for the fallen heroes when the idea was first proposed. She shared her thoughts with us. Digging up graves is an act that even the most cruel will not commit. It is an act that can only stem from the inherent evil inside. In all our years, we have never either seen with our eyes nor heard with our ears of such a shameful act of depravity having been committed. Even the brutal Ethiopian dictator Mengistu Hailemariam, with all his ruthless savagery and vicious evilness, is said to have ordered the body of an EPLF commander to be buried with honour, despite the fighter having been killed as he participated in the EPLF commander raid of the Ethiopian Air Force base in Asmara, which had resulted in the destruction of a number of Ethiopian aircraft. But this abominable act of desecrating the graves of our martyrs committed by these lowest of the low scoundrels, leaves behind a scar on the psyche of the Eritrean people that will never heal. A committee to oversee the restoration of the monument and cemetery of Shamboko was established. The committee was subdivided into three groups. The first group was tasked with recovering the scattered remains and identifying the graves of 130 martyrs. This task took seven months. The second group was tasked with coordinating the efforts of the volunteers. The third group was tasked with overseeing the restoration work. The local women helped by providing their labour during the building works and in addition helped provide food and water for the workers. The work was carried out with great enthusiasm and determination. The elderly Teklai, who had been a member of the committee established to erect a monument for Eritrean martyrs, had this to say. The news that the monuments that had been erected with such passion and heartfelt enthusiasm of the people had been destroyed by those scoundrels was the most difficult and bitter news that I had ever received in my entire life. The sorrow and pain that I felt then were so deep that I fell physically ill. After my sorrow eased, I reflected on what had happened. I knew that those that had done this were evil and utterly contemptible. They had wanted us to wallow in our sorrow we quickly overcame our sorrow and began to think about restoring what had been destroyed. And we did just that. Look, today you can see the monument of Shambhaku standing tall, draped in rich history. It has become a testament to the difference between the people of Eritrea who never tire of making rich new history to be proud of, and those despicable malicious elements whose only purpose it seems is to dishonour and defile the proud history of others. After the event, the prevailing emotion amongst the people that had boiled to the service was utter and complete disbelief. The question on everyone's mind was, how could they do this? The TPLF had destroyed medical establishments where the people had taken their sick. It had destroyed the courthouse, burnt homes, reduced the market to ash, looted, pillaged, and as if all this was not enough, it had gone on to dig up graves. Do they have an ounce of humanity in them? It was clear that such an act was an act of a person in extreme desperation, a person beyond the peripheries of human decency and all that is good. 
The destruction visited upon the monuments and graves of the Eritrean martyrs was a shameful act, one I could not believe until I had witnessed it with my very own eyes. When I saw what had been done, I was overcome with a sensation that no words could adequately describe. Over the years in Eritrea, countless heinous atrocities have been committed by Ethiopian rulers and those from the Tigray region, but never has such an act been carried out. A person of degenerative thinking is incapable of doing what normal people do. The leaders of the TPLF are people that suffer from an extreme and profound sense of being inferior to others. They are gripped in the throes of a debilitating sense of envy. It is because of this depraved mindset that when what they had planned failed, they resorted to committing an act that no normal person would even think of, let alone carry out. The purpose of this evil act was to sow the seed of hatred between the people of Eritrea and Ethiopia. A hatred that was supposed to last forever and a day. The elderly Barakatab Haile Mikhail, who is now 84 years old, recounts how he had been unable to evacuate from Tacombia when the TPLF forces had come, showing the marks and scars on his body, which testified to the mistreatment that he had received at the hands of the TPLF forces, he said, The wounds and the scars you see testify to my injuries. I consider my injuries to be light, and I am not in a great deal of pain. When they told me that the monuments to the martyrs had been destroyed and the graves dug up, I made my way there to see for myself. When I saw what had been done, I felt a profound pain. I felt sick to the core. For the first time in my life, I spoke bitterly to my Creator, asking Him why He had preserved my life only for me to witness such a thing. That day I saw evil. I was witness to pure evil. Overcome with emotion, he was unable to continue. His eyes swelled with tears and his body shuddered as he sobbed quietly. After a long while and great effort, he pulled himself together and taking a deep breath, he carried on. I assured myself that what lay ruined before me will be restored to an even greater glory than before. We were determined that the pride of our martyrs would not be tarnished by the reaction of these riffraff. It saddens me greatly that we were not fighting with men, but with animals. May the bones that they have scattered give them unrest. After the destruction of these monuments, the people quickly set about restoring them. The great contributions made by the Eritrean women who lived in Italy has to be mentioned. They contributed the entire expense required to restore both monuments. The residents of the rural towns, in an effort even greater than the previous one, contributed their share towards the restoration, both financially and materially. The administration office of the Gashbarka region took on the huge task of coordinating and carrying out the restoration project. It provided experts and was able to put in place a monument that befitted the memory of the heroes of Eritrea. This writing had been inscribed on the face of the stone monument at Belokaro in Matara. The inscription is in an ancient Semitic language and experts have translated it as Haggas together with his colleagues Alfene and Wetsabelene has erected this monument in memory of their forefathers. The inscription stands as proof that 2000 years ago in the area there were a people that had a culture of respect, friendship and collaboration. This ancient monument was blown up deliberately by TPLF forces in 2000 when they had taken control of the area. The short-sighted TPLF, which was incapable of thinking beyond the tip of its nose, destroyed the monuments thinking that the Eritreans would be angered and saddened. Little did it realize that the monument was a testament to the continuous years of human civilization of the region as a whole. It was not just the pride of the Horn of Africa, but the entire continent of Africa and the world. One cannot believe that someone in the 21st century was capable of carrying out such an act of vandalism on something as precious and irreplaceable as the monument of Belok Elo, which was not just part of the rich heritage of Eritrea, but humanity as a whole. The fact that the forces of the TPLF deliberately and spitefully blew up the monument of Belok Elo by placing explosives at its base is backed by hard, irrefutable evidence 
which has been presented to nationals of Germany, France and members of the United Nations Peacekeeping Force. The National Museum of Eritrea had presented the matter to the relevant authorities in UNESCO, levelling its accusations against the TPLF of willful destruction of the world's heritage. The deliberately blown up statue of Belo Kello was reduced in height from 5.68 meters, approximately 19 feet, to 1.6 meters, approximately 5 feet. Although it was impossible to restore it as it was, with the help of UNESCO and local experts, the monument was re-erected and inaugurated on 11th May 2005. The new monument was relocated a few meters away from its original position, leaving the original site as a testament to the vandalism it had suffered. The monument had been a testament to the identity of Eritreans and their rich cultural heritage. The newly rebuilt monument rose from the ashes, not only crowned with the glory of the distant history, but draped in new history also. It will remain as testament to the evil deeds of the TPLF to future generations of Eritreans. While the enemy had intended to destroy it, to wipe it off the face of the earth, it now stood more prominent than ever before, a stark reminder of what had transpired. A French archaeologist who had witnessed the destruction of this ancient monument, and who was later present at the unveiling of the restored monument, penned a poem in honour of the occasion. O oh, you that was erected in the ancient times, worry not for your glories restored to its lofty heights. None can defeat one with such resplendent history. The TPLF's destruction of the monuments honouring the memory of Eritrean martyrs and the desecration of the graves of Eritrean martyrs in Shamburg and Togodmir. The destruction of the ancient monument at Metara has left an indelible dark stain on the annals of Eritrean history. The primary motive behind such wanton destruction was an attempt to erase Eritrean history and obliterate the Eritrean identity. But the Eritrean identity, an identity forged through long years of struggle in tandem with its rich heritage, still stands tall, proud and assured. Give